Hello Rabbags, it's Jade with another Grounded Test Live server update. Don't forget this update's not live for everyone yet, it's only on the Xbox Insider program or if you chose the beta on PC, but you can sign up for free so go and check it out. The big update I'm expecting towards the end of the month around the 26th, 28th of January, that's when I think it's going to go live for everyone. So I'm kind of doing a showcase still on this one, I'm going to showcase some more of the weapons and the armors that you can get right now, but also towards the middle and end of the video I'm going to showcase stuff like this, the crossbow. It is in development, you can see it there, it's not finished yet. At the moment it gives you infinite arrows, so lots of good stuff to talk about with that. And then we're going to go over the black ant armor and tool set. I've actually managed to spawn in the shovel this time. I did show some of the stuff off, like the placeholders and the info about it, but I actually managed to spawn it in now and show you guys a little bit more. So again, all of this is going to be subject to change. It may not appear for months, some of this stuff, or it may in fact be put into this update. We don't know. It's test live. They do generally add some stuff maybe halfway through. That's what they did the last couple of times. So yeah, I am JPG, the home of survival. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe for the best in brand new grounded update content. Let's go. So I'm not going to go into too super depth with the B armor. The Rotten B set's been in the game a while, but I do believe you can scan the Rotten B set and it will give you the recipe, not just for the full B set, but the Rotten B set as well, so you can keep making it. If not, you're going to have to go and get some B fuzz or a stinger to unlock the B full set. And it gives you a free defense for each piece. So that obviously makes it one of the best sort of armors in the game. Pretty interestingly though, the bee fuzz you need for each one of these is quite a lot and you only usually get like one bee fuzz when you kill one bee. So you're going to have to kill about 15, 16 bees to get the full set. Again, this is the test server, so everything I'm saying, it may all change. That's why I'm going to leave it until the individual guides, until the test server's actually finished and this update goes live for everyone. And then I'll do it based on the stats and everything there. But this is kind of still just a preview phase where I'm showing you guys maybe a little bit what to expect. I guess the only last thing to say is that the cushion, the pin cushion perk for the B-arm set has been changed. It used to be full damage, but now it looks like it's going to be starting to mitigate either arrows or bee stings. Again, I've got to do a bit more testing on that. And then yeah, the Firefly headlamp, obviously three berry leather, five bioluminescent goop and four iridescent scales. You normally get maybe two gloop or one gloop from each kill from a Firefly and usually only one iridescent scale. So it won't be too hard to make that one and it's obviously got huge benefits. Now you can see with the rapier that I've switched to, it's actually giving me health when I've attacked it. Nearly two damage, lots of speed, but it's that life steal that's really the best thing about this. Let's go and take on one of these guys. So you can see it's increasing it. By the time I've killed one ant, I've increased my health by nearly a chunk. Let's try again on a weevil. A little bit there. So this is going to be great. If you don't have to use all your bandages up or you just want to run around a little bit more, you can literally go ahead and just have a battle with almost any creature. And you'll be okay as long as you've got this. Now obviously when your stamina runs out, yeah, that may be a bit of a problem. So fighting wolf spiders with this is going to be a bit of an issue still. But look how much I'm still healing up my health. I'm still taking these on. They're not really doing anything. In fact, I'm just going to stand here and let them get a couple hits in. And I can just keep replenishing my health. Obviously it helps if you've got a decent arm set on. So yeah, this seems a little bit OP, the lifesteal. I think they should probably think about reducing it or putting some sort of curb. Maybe the actual blade here can have a charge or a sack, if that kind of makes sense. Imagine it as if it was actually filled up with blood. So it could only basically take on lifeblood three times to heal you. Otherwise, I just think it's going to be, yeah, really OP. And it's so easy to get them as well. I've already got three of the blood sacks and three of the mosquito picks. So you can see the mosquito needle only needs two mosquito beaks, two mosquito blood sacks, and two silk rope. So it's not very hard to make one of these at all. And the other thing that you're going to be using the mosquito blood sacks for is the heel bassa. Now for that we're also going to need two silk rope and just one mosquito blood sack. So we're going to go ahead and make one of these. That's the bassa crafted. But let's do two. And then we'll put that there. Now obviously I'm not playing multiplayer at the moment. Oh, and I've just threw my sword away because I'm an idiot. But here's the heel bassa. I'm guessing, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna do some damage. Let's see if we get eaten a little bit by this spider. And then I'll throw one on the floor and see if it actually does damage to me. There we go. A little bit of damage, a bit more. 
Come on. I know I'm wearing decent armor, but you can do a little bit more than that. Let's throw it. Let's do it. Can I throw this down? So you just throw it like that, and it doesn't appear to heal me. Does it heal creatures by accident? That would be something interesting too. Let's get this down to halfway. Okay, and then we do that one, and then we're going to go for it. Oh, maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit there. Let's go and craft some more, and we'll test this out fully. I did watch this footage going back over it, and it does heal me a tiny bit, but really tiny, minuscule amount. So definitely think this is going to be better for your friends rather than you. And I ain't going to lie, I wasn't really paying too much attention to this dude. We'll get just to the R point. There we go. And then love that. There we go. It does. It actually heals creatures at the moment. So you've got to be careful where you're throwing this. I guess this could be really useful if you do end up having pets. You don't want them to die. You'll be able to rescue your pets by throwing one of these. But at the moment, they do kind of heal enemies too. Okay, next up we've got the Stinger Spear. I want to test this out a little bit. You can see it's doing a fair amount of damage. It's pretty OP. Now we have had it. We've had the rotten version of the spear. So it's not something completely brand new. But yeah, free damage, lots of critical hit chance. Seven speed nearly. And compare that to the Bone Trident, it's pretty similar. If anything, the Bow Trident does seem to do a lot more stun. But more or less, it's got the same damage output and the same speed output for the Stinger Spear as the Bone Trident. So for that, you're going to need one Beast Stinger, five Bee Fuzz, and four Silk Rope. And then I guess lastly, we've got to talk about the actual Weevil Shield. Let's uh, kill one of these bees just to see what kind of resources I get from it. And these guys can actually pack a pretty hard punch. If you haven't got any armor on, they will literally almost one-shot you. Now you can see it's still kind of doing the same sort of damage as the mosquito, but it's got almost like a double attack where it's going to hit you a couple of times with its stinger. So there's one, and then the next one it's going to do is the double. Now one good thing is, I was about to say it does look like earlier, if you aggroed one of them you'd be okay, but it does look like that if another does see you attacking another bee, that's it, they're all going to get involved. You see the pollen dropping off of them as well. I wonder what happens if I pick this up. Ah, get back here. Ah, okay. He's angry, he's angry, he's angry. And there you go, the other one's kind of not as... It, maybe it's literally if they see each other getting attacked. Oh no, no, it's definitely a case of, yeah, being close to this guy. Uh, I wonder if it's because I've actually just got the pollen on me. What if I drop the pollen? Does that help? No, that doesn't help the situation. So they are hungry for pollen, but it doesn't look like um, that's the only thing that's going to aggro them. It is a case of whether or not you kill any of their friends. And there we go. We've got more bee fuzz. Did I get all the bee fuzz from the other one I killed? So yeah, the bee sting is pretty good. Now it's time to take a look at the shields. So they did say shields were coming on the features board. But out of the shields we've seen, it looks like it's only the Weevil shield that you guys have got. Bearing in mind I'm using cheats a lot to access some of this stuff. We take a look. This is all kind of stuff we know's there. But this stuff is all brand new. A black ant sword. This one's going to poison on hits. So just like the larvae blade, or it's got at least the same description. When you actually look at the perk, the black ant sword doesn't actually list anything. So it does look almost identical. I'm guessing it's just a placeholder at the moment. But yeah, there is going to be another sword coming in. We're going to need black ant mandibles and black ant parts. And it does look like the black ant shield is going to be a feature too, as well as a black ant shovel. So pretty much everything you make with ant pieces, you will be able to then get like an upgraded version. Let's see if we can spawn some of this stuff in. Bearing in mind, it's not going to look any different, but it will at least give us an idea of maybe some of the stats they're planning in the future. A regular ant helmet, which is like one of the early armor pieces you get, it only barely gives you one defense. 
Whereas the black is going to give you nearly three and a half. It's exactly the same for the chest. It's the same difference. So we're going from having something that only gives you three defense to something that will give you ten and a half, making it one of the best armor pieces in the game. You can see it's tier two and it's got damage reflect. Now it does say hauling capacity is increased as well, but when I've tried it before, it doesn't actually work. I'm going to drop all these for a second. Let's equip the actual armor itself. So this is just a regular ant armor. Hum ant obviously means I'm protected against the ants from killing anything. And we do need to just get ourselves some blades somewhere of grass to cut. Fat. There you go. So there you go. You can see I can carry eight pieces. And that's the normal bonus that you get by having the ant armor. You can normally carry, what, five pieces. And then you get three extra pieces for each piece that you wear. But now when we switch to the black ant armor set. You can see it's only got the usual five that we can normally carry, so you do lose that bonus. Now the side effect is pinhole or pin cushion. Now I don't really want to delve into that too much, and quite frankly, I spent far too long trying to find out what the effect was on PC through some mods. But I'm not going to say what it could be, because originally the B armor was meant to give you no full damage, but it looks like they've changed that as well. So who knows? I mean, it does look like the ant armor set. Maybe it means you're going to take fewer hits, maybe from things. It says pin damage, so I'm guessing maybe it's something to do with spider attacks. I don't know, just something like really pincy. Or maybe it's actually to do with the mosquitoes. Maybe it doesn't get as damaged via mosquito attacks. Let's go and find something, though, and see how it actually does when we start getting attacked by something. Although one last theory while we look for something is that the black ants that are going to be coming in, I guess maybe they're going to have pincers and so maybe it'll offer a bit more protection against them. I'll tell you what, we could probably just take out this ant here. There we go. So you can see just tiny little bits of damage. And then let's switch over just to the ant actual armor itself, the other one, just to show a reference. If anything, I swear I'm taking more damage or less damage we're in the older armor set so clearly these stats are just nonsense or at least it looks almost exactly the same maybe about the same so yeah clearly unfinished work but we know they're coming so what are the black ants actually going to be are they going to be a completely separate faction of ants in different ant hills? Will they just be mixed with the red ants? Are they going to be like the elite guard that guards the ant queen? Because we know the ant queen is coming, that's one thing for sure, in the future. But that's not being worked on currently, that's like in the future plans on the actual roadmap. So yeah, it's a bit interesting. When you take a look at the features board, it simply just lists things like the ant pheromone control, the ant queen, and there are general sort of things that say more creatures but it doesn't actually say what type of creatures we're going to get. I've shown you guys before, we know we're going to get something like the Dragonfly, as it's been listed as part of a Dragonfly sword. We know the Roly Polies are going to turn up eventually too. But this is the first time we've seen anything about a different type of ant. So yeah, not really working at the moment, but it's definitely interesting to see what could happen in the future with this ant armor set. Is it going to be made out of queen ant parts? So there we go, I've created the black ant shovel after a little bit of digging around. And clearly, obviously, the acorn shovel only needs acorn pieces and sprig and rope. So literally, the only difference at the moment is that the black ant version's got an extra bit of damage. Just about gives it a nearly close to two. But yeah, it's going to be exactly the same. Let's go and try it and test it on some of the actual uh, grubs. There's one. Okay, so it does it almost once a job. We just about managed to pick up a grub there. Now let's switch over to the black one. So now this is with the black one. Oh, so it does half health almost instantaneously, so that is a lot quicker. Two, two hits of that and you're good, you're golden. Okay, so that's a huge improvement. So the actual black ant armor isn't exactly doing what it says it does at the moment, but definitely the shovel is. Okay, let's make some more of this stuff then. So we need more ant parts and berry leather. 
Okay, so we've got enough pieces now. Let's make the sword itself. And that says we need berry leather. It's not just the ant pieces. Okay, so we've got ourselves the new blade. Let's compare it directly to the normal one. So I've spawned in all three of the blades. We've got the larvae, we've got the spider fang, and then we've got the black ant. So you can really see they go up. With the black ant at the moment being quite a bit more damage. Also the lava blade and the spider fang both have poison. Whereas the black ant sword doesn't. So let's go and kill something with the spider fang. Just for reference. There we go. Two little unsuspecting victims. Two. Three. More or less three. Now let's switch over to the black ant sword one. One, two, oh, it takes a lot more health, a lot more. Although it's still going to be three swings. So that's the normal, normal one. Now let's do the black one there. So I guess it might have a little bit, maybe more durability as well. That's usually the big problem with the ant stuff. That's usually the big problem with the poison blades, the dagger one, the spider one, is that the durability on it was always pretty poor. I think they buffed it last time, but still. So yeah, pretty OP at the moment. Again, all subject to change. And then I guess we just got to take a look at the actual shields, the black ant shield. It's more ant parts, more berry leather. Now interestingly, this one doesn't actually need black ant parts. It just says normal ant parts. So I may be able to go ahead and take the ant parts that I already had. Maybe it can combine them. No, it still says I definitely need 10. And there we go, we've got the black ant shield. So again, it's going to look exactly the same like a normal weevil shield. So let's try and see what it looks like with the black evil one. Definitely got it equipped, equipped I should say. Let's go and find a spider. It's going to be our best bet. Come on, bud. Get your butt down here. Okay, we'll leave you alone. Okay, we'll maybe do it on an ant. Two. Three. Four. Five. About five hits. And if we then equip just a normal one. One, two, three, four, five. It's so not the most scientific test I've ever done, but it does look like the black weave or the black ant shield is slightly, only so slightly better than a weevil shield. Like you'll be able to take a few little millimeters of blocking damage. Two, it's quite big ones there. Three, it's more or less. And if I quickly switch, just the regular weevil shield. Oh, it's still got a cooldown on it, so you can't even do a trick of that. Okay, we'll have to wait for it to cool down. So yeah. I think it's too hard to say. I'm, I don't really think we've established whether or not the Black Ant one's got any buffs or bonuses at the moment. And as I said, they're probably going to change stuff anyway. What might be more interesting is whether or not it does recover the health a little bit more. So the Crow Crossbow at the moment does 2 damage and not very much stun. And it's got nearly 4 speed. If we compare that to just a regular bow, it does look almost identical. But at the moment, obviously, the crow crossbow is giving me infinite arrows. So do remember, it's completely unfinished, guys. We're not there yet with this. Obviously, they've got to add lots of stuff to it. I'm just simply kind of leaking and showing you this very early. Also, with the crow's crossbow, maybe you'll only be able to use feather arrows. Maybe that'll be something they'll change. So it'll be a bit stronger, but you can only use them in the crossbow. That would kind of make sense. A lot of games have it that crossbows need particular types of arrows that don't just work with every arrow.
So the crossbow is a two-handed weapon as well. That's important to note as well. Now, I did show this off in my video yesterday, but the pollen puff screen, it removes you from enemy sight for a short duration. So I'm guessing it's going to be some sort of potion or smoothie, maybe a food source that you can eat. Um, but I'm guessing it is going to be a smoothie and then that will stop you pretty much from being able to be seen. You'll be invisible from creatures for a few seconds. Now, it does look like that is all of the stuff unlocked there. There's nothing else really here that I can see. If some of this stuff does look pretty new to you, it's been showcased before, I've shown it off before, things like the harpoon gun. I don't think working particularly well right now. And the dragonfly slayer, that's still a work in progress too. But yeah, judging by what's going on with this, where I've unlocked a lot of the stuff, it looks like black ants might be coming a bit sooner than we think. And yeah, I've gone through all of the research items up to like level 7. I think it only goes up to level 4 or 5. And it hasn't really added anything new other than that stuff we've already covered. Before we finish the video, let's go and test out some stuff at the beehive with the crossbow and just kind of what aggro the bees get. Right, I've got my uh, bee little protection area. Let's see how this one goes. So obviously it still needs a lot of work at the moment with the crossbow in first person. Oh, right, he's angry, he's angry. And this is kind of working, but they are going to destroy the base pretty rapidly by looks of things. I was trying to get a way in. So they just get annoyed. They just get annoyed and leave you alone. Right, I've upset a few of them now. Whoa, so if you get a bit too close though, yeah, they will get you. Oh, they hit me through. That's not fair. Crossbow, you don't actually have to hold it. You just have to keep tapping it and it will fire off bows. It will fire off arrows. There you go. I managed to kill it at last. And I've got one bee fuzz and one bee stinger. So you're going to have to kill a lot of bees if you want to get like the full bee suit. Okay, I'm just taking a look again at the beehive. Now, I missed something. I've noticed this in this school. So, big shout out to everyone that was showing it. But apparently, if you don't come here in cheat mode, this will actually spawn in. And you can see items of food inside the beehive. Now, it doesn't do it in this camera mode. But supposedly, yeah. It will be there if you do go and build all the way up here. You will find a bunch of um, nectar or sap. So you can see that the bugs, they don't really start animating themselves or causing any light fixtures until you get a bit close to them. They kind of just hover around in areas before sort of descending. And then admittedly, you will see the lights of them. So there's plenty around the hedge areas. It looks pretty cool. There's also just some particle effects with that as well to make it seem like there's more of them. But I'm guessing that also signifies where you'll actually find them on the map. So we know there's some there. And there are some here. These guys are just like mooching along a little bit. So yeah, you get the idea. You'd have to look out for the glow at night time and then go and find them, hopefully if they land, and try and take out a few of them. But it does look like they are kind of over that big rock area there towards the gas canister. And I definitely noticed some on the other side of the lake or the pond on that side of the tree too. And pretty much that's it. Obviously the mosquitoes you'll find near the water, near the biomes. In fact, they're all over the place actually mosquitoes, just near the pond. And you will find them in the swampy area towards the picnic table. All in all, a good update. I really hope they toy it around with the percentages of the creature attacks though. I really think mosquitoes should be more OP, harder to kill, since the weapon that you get from them is ridiculously OP at the moment. Like it's too easy to just skip spam creatures and have something that gives you life back. Yes, bees are also over spawning. You guys have been commenting, showing that, yet yeah, there's like hundreds of bees flying around, maybe a bit too many. But I guess that's the idea that, you know, you're going to need quite a lot of this to make some of your armors and some of the later game stuff. 
And obviously, yeah, the Beehive is going to go through some changes. Maybe it'll be there by the time the actual full update comes out, but I reckon it'll be in the future that we see the fully finished Beehive. So there we go. I will see you guys for more grounding content very soon. As I said, as soon as the update goes live for everyone, expect shorter detailed guides showcasing everything to do with the perks for every single armor piece and weapon, giving you full stats. I just wanted to wait until that update's gone live before I do any more. Until next time, laters.